Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. I'm your host, Jerron Harrington, and today we're continuing with the part two retrospective recap for Naruto Mystic Adventures, What If Doctor Strange Trained Naruto? As I did yesterday with part one, we're going to be continuing with the recap of the Naruto Mystic Adventures series, because like I've said before, Next week, we are starting Boruto, Son of the Sorcerer, What If Boruto Was a Sorcerer, which will be the direct sequel to this series. And like I've said, with a lot of my older stuff here on the channel, the audio quality when I was making those videos aren't fully up to par. Sometimes the music's a little too loud. Sometimes my voice doesn't project enough. And I was just making those videos when I was at a very different point in time in my life. I know a lot of people have heard this story, but it kind of bears repeating. Anime Marvel was never supposed to be as big as it is today. Like the whole crossover thing, all these stories, they were all just supposed to be one-off what-if stories that just so happened to be anime and Marvel. But you know, things changed, the popularity, the series started to grow. Then, you know, you had the big crossover event, Avengers of the Multiverse, so on and so forth. So with this recap, I'm basically recapping the Shippuden part of the story. That way you can listen to parts one and two of the recap so that you can be fully caught up on the entire story as we head into the Boruto series. So picking up where the time skip leaves off, Naruto and Jiraiya would travel with Wong to his dimension and would stay there during the time skip and train under Wong. Now, this does bear repeating. The Naruto that was trained by Doctor Strange was trained by MCU Doctor Strange. So all the events of the MCU were taking place at the same time as Naruto. So when Naruto and Jiraiya go and train with Wong, that's after the events of Avengers Infinity Wars. So that's after Thanos does the snap. Half of all life in the universe has been erased. And you have that five year time period between the end of Infinity War and Endgame. So basically what you could call as the Marvel equivalent to a time skip. That's basically where Naruto and Jiraiya are hanging out halfway through that time skip. And afterwards, they then return back to their world. As for Sasuke, again, he was secretly trained by Loki. This being Loki from the Loki um, Marvel um, Disney Plus series, the one that's working with the TVA. The reason for this is because Loki, using TVA technology and needing to build an Avenger-esque team of his own, sees the potential of Naruto, but knows that he can't recruit him right now. He has to wait until the end of his story. So in the meantime, he decides to train Sasuke because he takes a liking to him, sees a lot of himself in Sasuke, and it helps bring Sasuke up to par with the other members of Team 7. Sakura in this timeline does not train with Tsunade. She trains with Agatha Harkness, which again, just in case you need a reminder, this version of Agatha is whatever version of Agatha Harkness that you want to pull from any random point in the Marvel Universe. This Agatha, her backstory is that she came from a failed world. It can be any type of failed world you want to call it. Age of Ultron, Marvel Zombies, whatever doomsday Marvel scenario you want to think up for why her world basically got destroyed. She just got away at the last moment, traveled to the first dimension that would be safe for her. This just happened to be Naruto's world. She migrated into Konoha, married into the Yue family, and she is the grandmother of Koronai Yue. So because Sakura was training with Koronai, Agatha saw her potential to use chaos magic similar to the Scarlet Witch. So you could say that Sakura is this world's version of the Scarlet Witch, if you want to say that. So she's taken in under Agatha, and that's who she trains with during the time skip. And basically, any sort of skills that you want to say the Scarlet Witch has from the MCU, you can just apply it to Sakura here. Finally, there's Haku, who again, I have to stress this, is a girl in this universe. Haku is a girl. 
She and Zabuza survived the Land of Waves arc and they moved to Konoha as well. And Haku trains under Tsunade. So she becomes the medical expert ninja along with gaining perfect chakra control and learning how to better use her ice release Keke Genkai. And she and Naruto have a thing. So one by one, we're going to recap the various arcs of part two of this series. Starting off, we have the Kazekage rescue mission. Now, because Jiraiya has been gone for the last two and a half years, he had to leave his spy network, his agency, to someone that he trusted, that being Kakashi Hatake. So, when Naruto and Jiraiya return, Kakashi wasn't even in the village at the time. He was off in the world doing his spy stuff. Basically, anything that Jiraiya was doing during the time skip, just apply that to Kakashi. That's what Kakashi was doing. Now, because Kakashi was not in the village, when the Kaze Kage rescue mission happens, Kakashi obviously does not go on the mission. Instead, it's Naruto, Sakura, Sasuke, and Haku. They are the four-man team that go to the Sand Village and they go to rescue Gara. And because of their newfound skills and abilities, they're able to move much faster than Team 7 did in the original timeline. Because of this, they're able to get to Gara a lot sooner when instead of having almost all of the One Tails extracted from him, he's only lost 50%, roughly 50% of the One Tails. So while Gara is definitely in a weakened state, he still survives and he still has the One Tails. Afterwards, Team 7, they battle against the Akatsuki and they end up killing both Sasori and Daedara with Sasori still giving them the information about Kenji Bridge with Orochimaru. Now, even though Gara is rescued, Gara instead chooses to fake his death. That way, the Akatsuki feel like they've killed him and they won't target the Sand Village anymore. So Gara goes into hiding with suggestion from Jiraiya. He goes into hiding in Mount Miyaboku for the meantime while he takes the time to recover his strength after his almost losing of the one tails now kakashi by this time returns to the leaf village and meets up with sasuke who wants to go on the tenchi bridge mission because he's looking for redemption remember sasuke was defeated at the valley of the end and brought back to the hidden leaf where he saw firsthand how his actions affected others and that's something sasuke took to heart because of that he wants to make amends especially for Hinata who got severely injured on the mission and someone who he's grown very close to during the time skip. So he wants to bring in Orochimaru and Kakashi wants to help him. That's why Kakashi recruits Yamato to be a part of their team and they basically form an Anbu-esque assassination squad to go after Kabuto and Orochimaru with a few other Anbu members, I say that with quotations, coming along for the assistance. Now, during the Tenchi Bridge arc, you have similar to what took place in the original with Kabuto confronting with Yamato on the bridge. Orochimaru shows up soon after and Sasuke and Orochimaru engage in a one-on-one -on -one fight. In the meantime, Kakashi and Yamato, they end up getting ambushed as Sai, Tarune Aburame, and Fu Yamanaka, members of Danzo's root organization, end up attacking them trying to kill them and tie up loose ends now in the midst of the fight sasuke is able to overcome orochimaru and is able to actually kill him permanently but because sasuke is tired because kakashi and yamato are also exhausted donzo shows up with a fleet of root ninja ready to kill all of them and just take everything and leave basically the biggest punk move that donzo could ever pull which would be in character for him. to kind of just tie up all the loose ends all at once. They take out Orochimaru, then he takes out all of them, eliminate all the Uchiha, all the Sharingans in his possession, and it's basically a win-win in that scenario. However, before Danzo has a chance to kill Sasuke, Kakashi, Yamato, and even Sai, who is basically about to be collateral damage, 
Itachi shows up and saves all four of them. Now, after this, Itachi takes them to a secret hideout where Sasuke would, at this point in time, learn the truth about the Uchiha clan massacre, with Kakashi explaining that during his trips as a spy, he made contact with Itachi who explained to him the truth. As such, Itachi has effectively been working for Kakashi as a double agent in the Akatsuki. Now, of course, Sasuke does not take this news well, and at first he does have his anger towards the Hidden Leaf for what's happened. But thankfully, because of Itachi and Kakashi working together in unison, they're able to reflect and push that anger instead of it being towards the Leaf, they push it towards Donzo and the Root organization, and they all make the collective effort to take out the Root. In the meantime, Donzo returns back to the Hidden Leaf and tries to paint the picture that Sasuke and Kakashi have become rogue ninja, but of course, Naruto and the gang don't believe it. Around this time, Zabuza would return and would meet with Naruto once again, and here's where it's revealed that Zabuza is the captain of Team Konohamaru. So instead of it being Ebisu, you could say it's technically Team Zabuza or Team Konohamaru, however you want to call it. But Konohamaru, Moegi, um, Udon, his friends, they're all being trained under Zabuza of the Demon Mist. So as we continue on with the story, Sasuke using astral projection would make contact with Naruto and would explain to him their situation. So Naruto can relay the situation to Tsunade, who creates a secret bunker on the outskirts of Konoha for Itachi to return because at this point, Itachi has to fake his death in a fight with Sasuke so that he can return back to Konoha and get much needed treatment because he was on the verge of death only being kept alive by his medicines. Now, following this, you have the Akatsuki suppression arc. This is where Hidan and Kakazu come in. Now, in the original timeline, Shikamaru and Asuma fought a losing battle against the Immortal Duo. But this time around, instead of bringing those two other ninja whose names escape me at the moment, they instead bring along Haku, Sakura, and Naruto. So instead of Naruto going on the Tenchi Bridge mission, Naruto goes with the Akatsuki suppression team. And because of this, Asuma survives his encounter with Hidan and Kakazu. Because Asuma, Shikamaru, and Haku are able to beat Hidan, while Sakura and Naruto are able to kill Kakazu together. Now, following this, you do still have the events of Naruto going to learn Sage Mode with Jiraiya at Mount Miyaboku, as well as catching up with Gara and checking in and seeing how he's doing during this time. And in regards to Naruto's Sage Mode training, this would be a lot different from the original timeline. Naruto wouldn't come up with the idea of using Shadow Clones to gain Sage Mode, but he would find a different method. If you remember, Doctor Strange from the MCU uses the Eye of Agamotto as a way of storing the Time Stone, but in the MCU following the events of Avengers Infinity War and with the Time Stone being taken away, the Eye of Agamotto pretty much becomes just another random useless artifact, if you even want to call it that. And Wong just so happened to have one of those Eye of Agamotto's around in the Sanctum Sanctorum, which he gave to Naruto as a keepsake. That's when Jiraiya comes up with a different idea. He gives Naruto what he calls a Sage Stone, a stone that's made purely from the toad oil of Mount Miyabuko, which, as you know, evaporates once it leaves the area. But the stone has been carefully crafted and created so that it doesn't evaporate or break. Naruto places this stone inside of his own Eye of Agamotto. And by gathering sage energy inside of the stone, the stone stores up Senjutsu Chakra that he can then slowly take into his body, which gives him perfect sage mode without the need of getting toad features or turning into a toad. Also, I just want to point this out in case anyone's forgotten, 
Doctor Strange does have more than one cloak of levitation, and he gave one cloak of levitation to Naruto that he uses. But instead of Naruto wearing a cloak, instead he took the cloak and converted it into his own Konoha flat jacket that he wears at all times. So Naruto has the ability of flight or floating, if you want to call it that, because instead of having the cloak of levitation, he took his cloak of levitation and turned it into a vest of levitation, just so you know ahead of time. Now, the pain arc still goes the same as normal, with the pain invasion going a lot worse in the favor of the Konoha Shinobi, since they'd be more prepared and they'd have more stronger fighters available for them. Also, with Naruto and Jiraiya both together, both as sages, and with the both of them versed in using magic, it basically makes Pain's invasion a mute point, with Konoha mostly being spared. However, following the events of the Konoha crush, Danzo would be pointed out for his treachery, with both Sasuke and Itachi working together to kill him once and for all. Following this, we have the events of the Five Kage Summit, which play out a lot differently. Since Sasuke wouldn't be a part of the Akatsuki, he wouldn't be going after Killer B. And instead, Kisame would go after Killer B by himself, and Kisame would have the same fate occurred to him just as in the original story, with the Raikage returning just in time to save his brother from the member of the Akatsuki, and... Obito would still declare war and the fourth great ninja war would shortly proceed after. Also, with Itachi now cured, there would still be the matter of if he should be punished for his crimes. While this would be brought up at the Five Kage Summit with Itachi now revealing that he was actually an inside man for the Akatsuki and for Konoha, there was still the matter of if the Uchiha massacre should be brought up at his behalf. However, because the Uchiha massacre was ordered by the Hidden Leaf, which is something they have to take accountability for, Itachi is not sentenced to death or given prison time. But instead, Itachi ends up serving a role that pretty much Sasuke serves in the Boruto series, where he basically acts as a shadow Hokage or a shadow ninja that just travels about and takes care of any crime in the underworld, since that's somewhere he was best suited to be anyway. Also, Sasuke and Itachi would switch eyes and the both of them would gain their respective EMS. As for Naruto, just like in the original story, he would be sent away to hide on the floating turtle island along with Gara and Killer B allowing for all three Jinjuriki to train and work together. With Gara finally getting back to full strength, he would gain his own version of KCM along with Naruto, or you could call it Shukaku Chakra Mode, so SKM instead of KCM. So, following that, you have the events of the 4th Great Ninja War. Now, as for what Kabuto is doing, following the battle between Sasuke and Orochimaru, Sasuke would take whatever remained of Orochimaru's DNA and would graft it into himself, gaining the Dragon Sage mode and those other abilities, but he would also take samples of Sasuke's blood, which as you know, any part of a shinobi can be used to study and to distinguish their abilities. So when Kabuto took and studied Sasuke's blood, a blood that was infused with magic because he was a sorcerer, this brought Kabuto into contact with a dark malevolent being that you know as Dormammu. Dormammu would essentially make a pact with Kabuto similar to the enemies from the first Doctor Strange movie who became followers of Dormammu, giving him the mark on his forehead and all that other stuff, making him a magic practitioner. And that would make Kabuto even stronger as he would summon not only Edo Tensei, but as well as mindless ones to help fight in the fourth great ninja war. However, Kabuto would be brought to an end when Itachi and Sasuke would confront him and get him to undo the Edo Tensei, with Kabuto being stuck forever in the Izanagi, where he would remain petrified to this very day and would eventually pass away and die. Also, Naruto, Killer B, and Gar would eventually leave Turtle Island 
and on top of that would be able to defeat Kisame and stop Yamato from being captured by Kabuto. So the White Zetsu wouldn't get that boost from using the Hashirama cells. Now, as far as the war arc is concerned, once Naruto and Killer B join in the war front efforts, this is where things would take a major turn in favor of the allied shinobi forces. Primarily because Naruto, on top of having KCM and having his magical abilities, would just be far too strong and would be wiping through the enemy forces a lot faster. You would have Sasuke and Itachi, two Sharingan EMS users, and on top of that, Sasuke would be a magic practitioner. You would also have Sakura, who wouldn't be a medical ninja, but instead would be on the battlefield using her chaos magic, which also adds to their ranks. On top of that, you have Kakashi, you have Jiraiya, you have Zabuza helping out in the war efforts, which only adds to their overall force and strength. And you can't leave out Haku, who again is a girl, would be working with the medical unit with Shizune, basically taking Sakura's place. And that's before you factor in the five Kage who would come in to assist at the time. And yes, because Gara temporarily took a leave of absence, Tamari would be serving in the place as the new Kaze Kage temporarily until Gara would return. Now, this would force Obito's hand. Even with Obito having one Rinnegan, he would still have no choice but to have Madara brought back to the forefront a lot sooner than he wanted to originally. However, Madara is in for a rude awakening when on the battlefield, he has to come face to face with both Sasuke and Itachi. Now, just like in the original timeline, Naruto would still befriend Kurama and would still gain some of the chakra from the other tailed beast. But where things take a much more different turn is that because of Naruto's different strength, skills, and the use of various spells, the war comes to an end a lot sooner. Madara and Obito are never made Ten Tails Chinchuriki because before they even have a chance to feed the remaining chakra to the Ten Tails, Madara is defeated and is sealed away by Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke, all of them using various forms of magical spells to seal away Madara permanently and eventually send him back to the afterlife. As for Obito, Obito is defeated and imprisoned for his war crimes where he remains in jail to this very day. So the war arc comes to an end a lot sooner and neither Naruto or Sasuke meet with the Sage of Six Paths, learn about being the reincarnates of Indra and Ashura, so they don't gain those power-ups. And I know a lot of people would want to say that Naruto and Sasuke would be weaker than their canon selves, but you have to remember that magic is a very tricky, slippery slope. So essentially, Think of the magical powers that they have offsetting not having Sage of Six Paths. Because when you have magic, no matter what form it is, it kind of just offsets any sort of world power that you might gain. Because again, with magic, you could do almost anything. Sometimes, but not always. So it just all depends. But what happens after the Fourth Great Ninja War? Well, about a year or so after, a magic portal would open in Konoha. Yes, the events of Avengers Endgame take place. Doctor Strange, after being brought back when the Hulk does the reverse snap with the Infinity Gauntlet, bringing back everyone who was killed by Thanos, Doctor Strange immediately goes to see Naruto. Naruto, who is happy to see that his master is alive yet again, but he recruits him to join in the final battle against Thanos and his army, the battle that you know from Endgame. However, Naruto doesn't go alone. Naruto, along with Sasuke and Sakura, would attend and would fight in the final battle against Thanos and his army of the Black Order and the Shatari during the events of Avengers Endgame. And with Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura all being there, their efforts allow for the defeat of Thanos without the need for Iron Man to perform the snap that ended up killing Thanos and his people once and for all. So this creates a whole new timeline where everyone survives the events of Avengers Endgame. That means Iron Man is still alive, Spider-Man doesn't lose his mentor, Doctor Strange, everyone else, they all survive, and Naruto would eventually return back to his world. But 
Now you probably want to know, well, what's happened since then? While I can't go into full detail since the Boruto series will cover that, I can tell you a little bit about the blank period. First, Toniri. Toniri Otsutsuki would eventually arrive to Earth and would attempt to take away Hinata Hyuga. This would lead to Naruto and Sasuke leading a team to go on the moon mission just like in Naruto the Last. Only this time, Sasuke would be more motivated than anyone else because he's the one that's in love with Hinata and he wants to get her back. Because of this and their fight with Toniri, Naruto and Sasuke in a critical moment would combine Kurama Avatar Chakra Mode along with Sasuke's perfect Susanoo. This melding of Indra and Ashura Chakra would meet the requirements for the two of them to finally meet with the Sage of Six Paths. Thus, they would be granted their power-ups that they didn't get in the war arc. They're going to get those power-ups here. So, if anyone's worried, this basically offsets anything that they didn't have in the original timeline. Also, another thing to take into account, Sasuke's Sharingan. As you all know, in the original series, Sasuke, using his Sharingan at first, couldn't fully perceive magic, but after practice with Loki, his Sharingan morphed from a red Sharingan to a blue Sharingan. Blue Sharingan allows him not only to decipher and read chakra, but it allows him to decipher and read magic. So because of that, Sasuke's Sharingan in this series is blue, indicating his ability and mastery to read both chakra and magic. So Sasuke has one blue Sharingan eye that can morph into a EMS, and he has the Rene Sharingan. While Naruto basically has all of the abilities that he still has in canon and more because he also has magical abilities as well. Also, as a gift to Naruto, Doctor Strange would upgrade his sling ring, going from a silver sling ring to the golden sling ring. So basically, anything that Doctor Strange's sling ring can do in the MCU, Naruto has access to it but he is the only one in this world that has the golden sling ring. Now, around the time when Naruto is about to become Hokage, that is where another change would occur. Just before Naruto becomes Hokage, he and Sasuke would have one battle because Naruto becoming Hokage meant that he would no longer be Sorcerer Supreme. And if you're asking how long was Naruto Sorcerer Supreme, Naruto has officially been Sorcerer Supreme from his 20th birthday all the way to his 27th, 28th, around that time period when he takes office to become Hokage. So Naruto has been Sorcerer Supreme of his world for the last eight years. Afterwards, Sasuke and he would have a final battle with Sasuke getting the win. From there, Sasuke would take over and he would become the second Sorcerer Supreme of the Naruto world, with Naruto becoming the Hokage. Itachi is still alive. He travels the world similar to how Sasuke does in Boruto. He doesn't travel dimensions though, hunting down Kaguya or things of that nature. That is Sasuke's job. But Sasuke doesn't just hunt down for Kaguya. He hunts for any magical threat that could pose as potential problem for his world or the multiverse. So basically, Sasuke does his job that he does in Boruto, but he does it on an even grander scale as the new Sorcerer Supreme, Sasuke Uchiha. In the meantime, what were some of the couplings in this world? Well. Naruto and Haku would get together and they would have two children, along with the likes of Sasuke and Hinata, as they would get together and have a child of their own. And finally, Sakura and Rock Lee would get together and they also would have a child. But that's a story for another time. A story that you'll be getting next week when we begin Borto son of the sorcerer what if boruto was a sorcerer the continuation of naruto mystic adventures 
What if Doctor Strange trained Naruto? But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of the recap. Uh, first, I just want to take the time to say thank you. I know I say that a lot with a lot of these series, but seriously, thank you all so much. Because, like I said, when I made this series, I didn't have a dollar in my name. I was just recording in my bathroom on top of my tub. And the fact that you guys cared about my series as much as you did, as much as you guys liked them so much, you've encouraged it. And we're about to hit 5,000 subscribers. The fact that I've come this far, um, we're approaching the four-year anniversary of Power Core Productions. That'll be um, on, on the week of my birthday. My birthday is May 2nd. And when I did my first story, I did it on May 4th. All the way back then, May 4th, 2021, when I first did What If Naruto Was in High School DxD, first story I ever did on this channel, the first story that got me to 500 subscribers before I even made a second story on this channel. Again, I'm grateful to all of you. The fact that I've gotten this far, I couldn't do it without you. Like I've said from day one, you make the channel grow, you make the core grow. So I appreciate all the support, everything that we've done so far from phase one to phase two. We're now getting into the tail end of part one of phase three. And I can't wait for you guys to see what's to come. Um, we've got some early stuff in the works for phase four, but that'll be revealed in due time and everything else that we're doing here on the channel. So thank you all. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being fans. Love you all. Appreciate you all. You're a part of the core family. You make the channel grow. You make the core grow. But anyway, that's going to do it for the end of today's video. The end of the recap. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. As always, signing off and I'll see you next time.